Well, 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 we're going to make some people mad in the investing community today. So every one of these investor guys has been talking about Workhorse and how great it is. And I was like, well, I should probably like look into that, I suppose. So started looking into Workhorse stock and holy cow, this one scares the crap out of me and I'm not touching this one. So we're going to dive in. There's going to be a lot of technical charts. There's going to be a lot of that stuff, which you should look into anyway, if you're a good investor. So we're going to go through why I think Workhorse stock is going to burn, baby, burn. So why I believe that this stock in particular is going to burn. And we're going to talk about the U.S. U.S. Postal Service contract that everybody's so stinking bullish about. We're going to go ahead and talk about that. And then many other factors about workhorse stock and why it's at the price it's currently at. So we got a lot to get into. There's going to be a lot of technical stuff after this here that we're going to dive through. And then we're going to go ahead and see how we feel about workhorse at the very end of the video here. So go ahead and like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Hopefully I'm not going to catch too much flack or too much hate. I'm sure I will because people freaking love this stock. So probably going to catch some hate here, but that's all right. So let's dive in. The first thing I want to talk about is just revenues here. So they made last quarter 91,000 and they had 131 million negative and then they've been having just thousands of dollars of revenue here to start out with and in the negatives for millions. So a serious amount of cash burn. I understand that it's to build the company and it's to get things ready for the potential contract here. So let's move on to the next point. So last quarter, they only produced about 100000 in actual revenue, and they were having such serious cash burn issues, which I understand for the USPS contract, they want to be able to, you know, submit some sort of design to try and get that built. But the market cap right now on workhorse stock is $2.67 billion. So that is a huge, huge number. Just think about that. That's not millions. That's billions when they've only had thousands in revenue. So I just quite don't understand the market cap on this one. I understand there's potential, but the market cap is ginormous right now for the amount of revenue that they're bringing in and the huge cash burn that they currently have. Oh, holy crap balls, 2.67 billion is how they're valued right now. So why are they valued so high? So the Postal Service has said that they have a contract worth about 6 billion, which if they were able to get a good chunk of that, I'd understand it, of business to build as many as 180,000. Keep that number in mind, 180,000 delivery vans. It's also is splitting giant orders between multiple parties. So there's multiple offers right now that are going in and Workhorse is one of those parties teaming up with a couple other people. 180,000 vehicles are out there. Who are the teams that are left that will possibly build this here? So we have the Turkey Base Carson, which makes commercial electric vehicles teamed with longtime USPS supplier Morgan Olson of Sturgis. Uh, the team has offered a plug-in hybrid option for the new mailing trucks. Then we have Mahindra Automotive, but they pulled out, so I'm not super worried about those guys. And then we have our girl Workhorse Group here, who teamed up with VT Hackney. They have dropped out, but then Workhorse Group paid $7 million to go ahead and secure the rights to the work that they'd already done on the USPS trucks. And the last one here is Oshock Corp and Ford Motor Corporation. So those are the last ones here that we have to note about all of the competition, which it should be noted who the competition is. So when looking into the competition, let's just see about how much the competition has made here. So the competition is, you know, Carson Automotive. We're going to go ahead and look and see how much they've made here. So when we look at the units here, we can see that it says in that the outline there are thousands of units. So I believe, and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, that in 2019 they made 17 million units. And then bus-wise, on the bottom left there, they made 23,000 units. So this company is producing thousands of thousands of units. Who's the other competitor? Here we have Oshkosh Corporation, and we also have Ford. So that's a powerhouse duo that they have here. Look at the financials. Look at the number of money that they've been pulling in. They've been pulling in billions of dollars of you know revenue and earnings. They've done quite well for themselves as well. So they've pulled in you know anywhere from eight billion in 2019 to like six billion in 2016. So a huge, huge company. Let's look into them a little bit more and see what kind of competition they're going to give. So we can see that Workhorse has some big time competition here, but I want to try and hit some of the bullish points as well. They have Lordtown Motor Corporation, which has also entered and helped them. So they have combined with them. They have taken a small stake in that company. They've taken out some debt for this company as well, but this should be helpful in their bid for the contract. But we have to see how many vehicles that they're making compared to their competition here. 
So again, this is all coming from the last quarter summary that they had in their investor relations page here. So I highlighted a couple good points in this chunk here too. July of 2020, initial purchase order of 20 C1000 trucks from E Trucks LLC, Cincinnati-based launch company. Um, and then later on in July 2020, they delivered two, so keep these numbers in mind, C1000 electric step vans for initial use. So 20 orders, and then they have two that they've delivered. And then we see that they've had for their quarter $92,000 in revenue. So we can assume that's hopefully from sales of the two uh, vehicles that they sold. Um, they show compared to 5,500 in the second quarter, but then they go on to say how much more debt they pulled out this quarter. So $92,000 in revenue. So let's keep these numbers in mind here. The next thing we can look at here, and this is on their Q2, uh, selling general administrative expenses increased to 3.9 million from 2.0 million. And they only made $100,000 in revenue this last quarter, guys. So 3.9 million from 2.0 million, they're saying, oh, increases consulting for higher employee-related costs and incentive stock operations. And the research and development, this one I can get behind a little bit more because they probably need to do more of this to be able to produce vehicles for this contract they're having to be able to actually have the R&D done to be able to make these vehicles went from uh, went up to 1.6 million from 1.2 million. So that one I can get a little more behind. So here we can look into the UPS contracts that we have, and we can see we have six orders placed today totaling 1,345 vehicles, and all oh, that looks pretty good. But we can see here that 345 of these vehicles are the Gen 1 E-Series workhorse vans. So that's the ones they've actually delivered, and that's going to be different than the UPSP ones that they're going to be making. So they have orders of the C-1000s right now of a 1,000 of those, but they have not currently been delivered. And as we saw before, they only were able to deliver two of those last quarter. So the question for me, the huge question, is production. All right, so I'm gonna try and put everything a little bit together here on my thesis, and we're gonna hop back on the board to kind of talk about it a little bit more here. But here's their last slide that they talk about the UPSP contract that they potentially are going to be getting here. So they say they have the one prototype they've been building, they've been dumping money into that, I get that they're spending research money on this and everything like that. And then they say they have the potential to build 165,000 vehicles, and they have the potential to get up to 6.3 billion on that contract. And here you gotta just be kidding me, right? Like they've made two vehicles last quarter that would be of the similar, you know, make of this one. So I just don't even understand how they think this is even feasible. In six years for UPS, they've made 345 vehicles. They made one vehicle that basically made them revenue last year. So I just really don't understand where all the bullishness is coming from. I They just haven't produced a ton of vehicles. I don't see why people are thinking they're gonna get most of this contract or any of this contract or any more than a couple thousand of these vehicles. And the infrastructure needed to deploy all of these vehicles Vehicles would be absolutely crazy. Granted, they are making some partnerships that we noted earlier that could be pretty good for the stock, but I don't believe they're going to be able to produce even a thousand vehicles. And if they're making 90,000, let's say, per vehicle, or 100,000 or 200,000, you know, even if they made a thousand vehicles, you know, that's still not going to really move the needle a ton. You know, it would give them a couple 200 million of revenue, which would be way, way, way better than it is now. But this stock is almost valued at $3 billion right now. And the fact they've only made a hundred thousand seems absolutely ludicrous to me. So let's try and pull some of this information together that we just kind of looked through and kind of make some conclusions on workhorse stock here. So what have we learned through all of these things that we looked through? And this is on the investor relations page of all of these. This is Yahoo Finance that I'm looking on for the technicals and the analytics there on all of that stuff. So what have we learned here? So we learned that the UPS contract is for 160,000 vehicles. Keep that number in mind, 160,000 vehicles. Last quarter, workhorse made two of their C1000s, two of them. That is a little ways off of 160,000. And in 2020, as a whole, they were hoping to make 300 to 400 trucks total. So, and this is optimally how many trucks total they would make, and then they had 20 more orders they wished to fulfill as well. I do understand that they're making these partnerships to try and up their production. I understand that. But to think they could up their production and keep the quality and have the R&D be so on point is kind of hard for me to fathom. So they need 160,000 trucks. And the competition here is crazy. So 
the corporations they're facing against are already able to make lots and lots of trucks. So this Osh, I'm going to say the name wrong, Oshkosh Corp, Oshkosh Bagosh Corp, if I can spell it wrong, let me make sure I spelled it right, is partnered up with Ford. And this company is bringing in fat stacks, people. This company is bringing in billions of dollars. This is a mega cap company. This is a huge cap company. When, you know, they have a great track record when Workhorse does not have such a great track record. So to think it's going to go to anybody but this Oshkosh Corporation or this Carson Corporation, like these guys are making some serious amounts of trucks. I got to make sure I spell it right, otherwise I'm going to catch flack. So these guys are making some sick amount of trucks that the competition is making. So they're making tons and tons and tons of these vehicles. Carson's in the thousands and it looked like in the millions because it said on that one sheet we looked at that it was in the thousands like that. So these guys are making tons and tons of vehicles and I believe they are not going to want to go all the way to EV. They're probably going to want to do, and this might just be me personally, but probably some sort of like hybrid model. So that is what the competition is kind of looking at. And this is what these two are trying to make is more of a hybrid model. And this Oscosh and Ford is more of a combustion engine. Um, internal combustion engine is what they're kind of looking into. Let's look at the value of this company that we also looked at right at the beginning here. So it's valued at $2.67 billion. Now, how much money did they make last quarter? They only made, it wasn't even 100, it was 90, 90,000. But they only made $100,000 in revenue and they're debt loading super hard. And get me, like, I understand they need to put out some debt to be able to try and get a nice juicy chunk of this $6 billion contract that they're wanting to get. I understand that they need to take out some debt. They lost their partner. They had to buy the rights. So they had to debt load on 7 mil there to get the rights to all of the USPS stuff that they had worked on together. So I understand that. And I understand they're working on partnerships and they're trying to get stakes and they're trying to get ways to build things. Let's hop to the next page. All right, and on a Q2, we saw that 400 vans was kind of the goal, 300 to 400 was kind of the goal for Workhouse, Workhouse, Workhouse in 2020. So they wanted to make 400 vans in 2020. So let's keep that in mind. And granted, I understand that they got patents and this is kind of a small amount and everything like that. So Workhorse wanted to make 400 vans in 2020. Now they're doing all this research and development and they're making partnerships to try and increase their production values. I understand that as well. USPS contract is for 180,000 vehicles. You know, this is $6 billion chunk of pie that we're talking about. That's a tasty ass pie right there. So we're talking about $6 billion here that they're trying to get a chunk of. And that's why the share price has gone so high that they think they're gonna get some chunk or a decent chunk of this pie. I get that. So with the R&D and the partnerships, let's say they 10x production from that 400 vans. That's still only 4,000 vans. That is not a very significant chunk of this. Let's say they 100x, and this would be like crazy if they were able to scale productions this much. I would say absolutely bananas if they could 100x their production in like one year. And I know this contract is probably set over a few years to make these vans. But let's say they 100x their productions. That's 40,000 vans. And this is like optimal, optimal, optimal optimal like holy cow everything they won the lotto they built seven factories or whatever so they 100x the produ production of these vans that they're making and let's say they're getting about 100k per van uh, which could probably be about roughly right because these are just the mail carrier vans they're not their um, their other model which is the bigger like ups delivery trucks or whatever they're just the mail delivery vans so let's say with the 4,000 vans if they 10x production next year and we're kind of talking like 2021 if they got a chunk of the contract that would mean over the course of that year, and this is kind of excluding other things, so keep that in mind, they would make about four, and just for the sake of math, I kind of kept the number simple. If they made four million dollars, you tack on three O's, pew, pew, pew. So they made four million dollars if they 10X production, and they made 40 million dollars if they 100X the amount of vans they're able to make. So in this case, their revenue has been, let's go even super optimally, 40 million dollars. Optimally, super duper optimally. So they've taken out a ton, a ton of debt to even get to the point where they can possibly even get this contract. So they have this 40 million. They're still worth right now 2.67 billion. Guys, the numbers don't make sense here. They should be bringing in hundreds of millions and be getting some sort of evaluation like that. And their last freaking quarter, they brought in 100K. And they got so much debt load from all, and I understand the debt, but they got such a huge debt load. So let's kind of bring this all into, by context here. 
So my personal opinion is that Workhorse's share price is all based on this hope of getting a good chunk of this $6 billion. But realistically, I can't imagine they're even going to be getting, you know, 50,000 vehicles to produce. I can't even imagine they'd get that. I can't even imagine they'd get, gosh, I, I can't even imagine they're going to be getting a good significant portion of that with the stacked competition that they have against them. So I think the USPS whole entire hopes are on this contract. What is going to happen to the share price if they get a small portion of this contract? What's going to happen if they get no portion of this contract? So Workhorse's hopes and dreams are all on this USPS contract. There's no way it should be worth $3 billion when they've only made a couple vehicles. For UPS, they made a bunch of vehicles that are not their current model. They made 345 vehicles there. So really, I feel like the main valuation of this company is based on this contract that everybody's really, really hoping that they're going to get. So let's talk about this contract and the potential outcomes of what happens. Let's say they get a huge chunk. You know, I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking all Kosh Bagash here and Ford are going to get a good chunk of it. And I own Ford, and this has kind of made me want to buy some of this OSK stock. And it's also uh, made me kind of want to keep my Ford because I think they're going to get a good chunk of this contract because they actually can produce these vehicles. Anyway, so let's say they get a huge chunk of this contract. I doubt it, but let's say they do. Then, yeah, they could keep going up. You know, if they get a good chunk of this $6 billion, it'd make the $3 billion ma on, like make sense. You know, it'd make it more reasonable you know these companies over here are already worth billions and they've already made billions of dollars worth of products and everything like that so it'd be a little less crazy for them to get this kind of bump but it'd be crazy for a three billion dollar company to get like a six billion dollar bump so yeah it's gonna rise like crazy and i get the bullish thesis if they're able to do that i just don't think they'd be able to manufacture i keep having to look at this freaking number 180,000 vehicles i don't even think they're even close even if they partner with you know whomever i don't think they're even close to that so thinking they're going to get a huge chunk, let's say they could make 40,000 of these vehicles. They get a contract for 40,000. What would that be? Well, let's, let's try and make it easier math. Let's say 45,000 for the sake of math, because that'd be a quarter of it. Let's say math, math real quick. Yep. So that'd be 25% of it. <clears throat> so let's say they get a small chunk. They get 25% of it. They somehow are able to fricking 100 million X their production rates and stuff like that. And they get 25% of this contract and they're pulling in a cool bill ski. Cool bill, cool, like 1.5 bills. So, I mean, I would still think based on that, you know, they're going to get the contracts going to be over years and years. I would almost still think it's going to go down because people are so bullish and it's so overvalued right now that people are thinking they're going to get a huge, huge portion of this contract. So if they get a small chunk, which I'd say is 25% or less, which I think is, I almost am very sure it's not going to get any chunk at all, then it's going to probably go down in my opinion. I would say it's probably still going to go down or be flat. Could be flat. That's, that's what this is, flat guy. So it could also be flat. If they get no chunk, and this is what scares me the most, and this is why I think this stock is going to crash and burn. If they get no chunk, which I think is highly likely. I don't know, is there any in that one? Maybe not, I don't know. So if they get no chunk, which I think is highly likely, I think the day that is announced, they lose 50, 75%. They're gonna get absolutely destroyed. And I hate any type of Sentinel event. So any event, that is going to absolutely crush my holdings. I hate that. I hate any chance of that. I just lost 75% of my wealth because of one event that's happened. You know, it's not based, this value isn't based on the company and what they're doing. This value is based on potential. And I hate that. I hate that so much. I do not like my value being built on potential. So that's kind of my bit to say on Workhorse. I know I'm probably not going to make any friends today in the comments section. If you did enjoy the content, I tried to be kind of analytical about it. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And if you hated it, if you disagree with it, let's just talk in the comments. I like to hear people's opinions on things. So, you know, if you do own this one, I hope you guys make some money. You know, I'm not going to poo-poo on you if you make some money. People have made money since my last video on this one, which I'll link in the link that as well. So people have made tons of money on this. Good for you guys. Uh, I hope you continue to make money. I hope they get a good chunk of this contract. I do like the company. And I think, you know, going green is good and everything like that. So hopefully you make some money. Hopefully you liked the video. Take care and have a good time.